In this video, I'm going to do a review of the Harbor Freight Predator 8,750-watt inverter generator. Yeah, here it is. And the continuous amp or watts you can draw from this is 7,000, which is 29 point something amps you can draw. And this is an inverter-based generator. That means it has very low, low uh, total harmonic distortion. And that's something that's good for, like, if you're running uh, modern electronics like TVs or these inverter-based uh, welders. And here's a 5,000 watt uh, Honda generator I bought like 15 years ago. And all the parts are separate, like the wheels, the handle, this piece up here so you can pick it up. And they also make a, a kit where you can put a battery and a battery box on it, but you have to buy all those parts separate. This Predator generator, at half the, less than half the price, comes with all that stuff with it. And it, this one's bigger than that at 7,000 watts. So what I'm planning on doing with this is uh, buying a van and I'm going to put this in the van and then I'm going to hook two uh, welders and a plasma cutter up to it. And those welders and the plasma cutter actually only draw about 15 amps. Yeah, and I also made this adapter up so I can plug it in because it's got a twist lock uh, 240 volt plug on it. Yeah, so now I'm going to take it out of the box off camera. Yeah, and here's what it comes with. There's the wheels and the handle and everything. And here's so you can charge uh, batteries with it. I think it puts out 8 amps at 12 volts. It comes with some different jets for the carburetor if you live in high altitude. And I think this weighs about 150 pounds. And Underneath the generator are these two brackets you need to remove. They're uh, yellow there. That's just so when they're shipping it, it doesn't move around these rubber mounts. Yeah, so next I'm putting the wheels on. These just bolts just go on these two holes. It's pretty simple. Yeah, so when you put these wheels on, the bigger washer goes on the inside here. That's what it says on the instructions. Yeah, and you also have to hook the battery up. The best way is just to tip this up and then you can hook those cables up. Yeah, and this bracket for the handle goes on next. And with the rubber bumper that's down here, faces down. Yeah, and there's just one bolt you put through here for the handle, and then this pin goes right on here. Yeah, so next we've got to put oil in it. And the oil cap's kind of hidden down here underneath the control panel. And because it's hidden, it, it, come with, it comes with this funnel to put the oil in it with. Yeah, when you're putting oil in one of these, you just fill it up to the top. That's the high spot. A lot of people didn't seem to understand that when they were making videos on these generators. But this is basically just a copy of a Honda engine, so they're exactly the same. Yeah, and it holds one and a quarter quarts of oil. So now I'm ready to run it. And you just want to make sure the fuel valve is turned on. And I recommend putting this fuel stabilizer in the gas. If you don't do that, the gas goes bad real quick and then it won't run after that. Yes, yeah, so then you're just going to pull a choke out.
Yeah, I'm going to try this TIG welder out with it plugged into the generator. And in the cards, I'll put a link to the review on the TIG welder and this welding card that I built. Yeah, I'm going to weld some quarter inch thick metal, so I'll set the TIG welder at 200 amps. Yeah, let me try it again after I sharpen the tungsten. It kind of messed it up because I had it on AC for Hurst. Yeah, and this is the well right here, the bottom one that I just did, and it, it works good.